my name is Matt Brazel, and I'm a solution consultant here at ServiceNow with a focus in IT asset management. I'm here today to talk about and overview our software asset management solution, or SAM. Now, for today, we're going to focus on software asset management, but I did want to highlight some of the other products that fall under our IT asset management solution, uh, such as our hardware asset management solution, cloud resources or cloud insights, as well as our enterprise asset management solution. So making sure that all of these things are able to feed off of and execute from the now platform. I wanted to cover some of the main challenges that our customers face with regards to software asset management. Namely, this is going to come from and be rooted in disconnected tools as well as siloed teams leading to process inefficiencies. And because of these disconnected tools, this is going to lead to a lack of cost visibility as well as potential for shadow IT and application sprawl to run rampant inside of your environment. And ultimately, we want to make sure that our customers are moving towards a proactive rather than reactive state, making sure that we have the ability to defend against these external audits, as well as make sure that we limit unbudgeted and surprise costs inside of the software asset management solution. Now, diving a little bit deeper into the software asset management solution itself, the main goal here is to make sure that we can answer these questions as asset managers here on this slide. Things such as, what software do you own? Are you buying what you need? And are you using what you have? And while these might seem like very simple questions, a lot of times there's a good amount of complexity that goes into answering these questions, as well as being able to manage the software lifecycle, which we can also see on this screen, everything from request to retire. On the Now platform with our SAM professional solution, we have built out out-of-the-box prescriptive workflows for these different things that we see inside of lifecycle automation as well as being able to make sure that we have the visibility to be able to answer these three questions that you see on the screen. Now, before we get into a live instance, I wanted to quickly touch on what this solution is gonna look like. So from all these different locations, things such as procurement systems, spreadsheets, and SaaS APIs, we're gonna grab that purchasing information and put that into the Now platform, as well as raw inventory or discovery information making sure that we have that inventory as well as purchasing information to ultimately get that compliance position. Now, what makes us able to get that compliance position is our process known as normalization, where we ingest this purchasing and raw inventory data and make sure that all of this information is standardized under one naming convention for each particular software product so that we have accurate insights and visibility into that compliance position. Additionally, we also provide the capability to take action on that compliance position with things such as low usage metering, allowing you to reallocate software licenses, as well as see potential savings through optimization of these software and SaaS spend. So now we're inside of a live instance. We're looking at the Tokyo release currently. It's going to use the next experience very similar to the San Diego release. And we're in here inside of the software asset management workspace. Now this is the homepage, which is presenting out a lot of the key and heavy hitting widgets and information that software asset managers are gonna to need to face on a daily basis. Things such as publishers out of compliance as well as products out of compliance, what the total true up cost in our environment is going to be, as well as what top five publishers and their true up costs are. Additionally, we also have the activity center here on the right. This is going to be presenting out notifications and different alerts inside of our environment so that we are up to date with all of the live data inside of our asset environment. From this space, we can also run reconciliation on demand inside of our environment. You can run this either on demand or it will run weekly inside of your environment and we can run it for all publishers or narrow it down to a specific publisher. So now I want to move us into the licensing usage portion of this workspace. This is where we're going to have these cards per individual publisher presenting out compliance and licensing information at a very high level. So we can see here, we've got our main publishers here at the top that we've gone ahead and pinned. We can see the percentage of compliance inside of this particular suite, 
how many compliant products we have out of the total, as well as a true up cost and over licensed amount for each one of these publishers. Now from this space, we can go ahead and actually drill down into one of these publishers and see the product information as well as compliance at a more granular level. So right now we're looking at the Microsoft publisher and we're seeing all of this information here in the summary section for the entire Microsoft publisher suite, but I can actually go ahead and move in and drill down into a specific version of a specific product and have this report out all of that information at that level as well. So in this view, we're looking at 2016 Microsoft Professional. The system is notifying us that this product is not in compliance, and we can see a bunch of good KPIs in the form of these widgets. But I wanted to call attention to this particular number, the amount of unlicensed installs inside of this particular environment. It looks like we have 26 unlicensed installs. Now, where is that number coming from? This is coming from being able to compare the number of licenses that we own for this particular software model and the number of licenses that are being used inside of our environment. So in this particular case, we have about 26 licenses needed to get us into a compliant position. And based on the cost of each of these licenses, it's going to go ahead and give us what that total true up cost would be. Now from this space, we can also go ahead and view all of the removal candidates that have been identified by the system. These removal candidates can be identified through multiple different justifications, but the main one is generally through the low usage justification. So in this scenario, these individuals are not utilizing this product to its full capability, and maybe they haven't signed in in a couple of days, which has identified them as a removal candidate with the justification of low usage. We're also being presented with different remediation options for this non-compliant product. We've got four here. We're able to remove these unlicensed installs from that particular hardware and make sure that we can grab those licenses and put them back on the cell shelf. We can also go ahead and purchase more rights if we identify these users as needing this particular software and we just need to go out and grab more licenses. We can also have the ability to remove unallocated installs or go ahead and create allocations from rights that are sitting on the shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and move us into the next section of the workspace. This is gonna be the licensing operations uh, module inside of the software asset management workspace. This is where we're gonna be able to see information such as all of our different software entitlements, software models, and where we're gonna be able to import uh, different model information. And if you are going ahead and using the contract management solution, this is where we can view different pieces of contract information inside of our environment as it pertains to software asset management, as well as different discovery information. So if you're going ahead and utilizing a discovery tool, whether it's ServiceNow's discovery tool or a third party discovery tool leveraging the integration, this is where you're going to be able to see those raw pieces of inventory and pieces of software inside of your environment and what type of discovery information we are grabbing. There's more information inside of this license operation space. I won't go ahead and flesh it out too, too much, but this is where we go ahead and address client access lists, as well as different user subscriptions, direct SaaS integration profiles, and single sign-on pieces of information. Moving on inside of the workspace, this is going to be our software asset analytics portion of the workspace where we're able to see different breakdowns inside of our software estate. In this particular view, we're looking at the SaaS overview where all of this information is going to be presented out based on the different SaaS products inside of our environment. Things such as the total spend, true up costs, over licensed amount, as well as other very, very useful widgets and different KPIs coming through, all based on that live CMDB data underneath the hood. We can also see different consumption analytics based on usage over time for particular SaaS products. Inside of this space, we also have the ability to go ahead and create an entitlement as well as create a direct integration for a SaaS provider. So all we'd have to do is go ahead and select 
which type of integration we want to go ahead and create and then provide the admin credentials to make sure that the now platform can hook into that SaaS API and grab all of that information. There's other pieces of information in here as well, such as optimization and savings. Just because you're inside of a compliant position doesn't necessarily mean that you're optimized inside of the way that you're allocating or using different software licenses. So this is where the platform really earns its ROI for our customers. It'll be able to present out different publisher optimizations inside of your suite. So in this particular example, we're looking at the Microsoft publisher. We're able to see different user activity per particular subscription, as well as things such as optimization recommendations over time. So in this particular view, we can see downgrade options based on user usage. Maybe it's from an E5 license to an E3 license, or maybe there's different cases where particular users are doubly licensed for what they're using. And we want to go ahead and address that, make sure that we are in fact optimized as well as being compliant in our environment. This is where we're going to be able to manage our engineering licenses, which are traditionally more expensive licensing. So you want to make sure that that is handled and under control inside of your environment. And this is going to present out key pieces of information based on publisher, potential savings, total spend, and the products inside of your engineering license suite. There's also a piece to software asset management inside of that normalization conversation to make sure that we do have that durable data as we go ahead and automate different pieces of the lifestyle with each individual workflow. So this is gonna be a view where you can see exactly how that normalization information is living inside of your environment, exactly what's come through is normalized, what's been manually normalized partially, or it needs to go ahead and be addressed. Now, there is another piece to the software asset management solution in our enterprise SKU, where we are able to go ahead and monitor and bring this type of optimization to different cloud environments, where inside of this cloud insight solution, you're going to be presented out all of this information, such as unassigned resources, right sizing for optimized spend and performance inside of your cloud environment, as well as cloud spend analytics and other good pieces of information to make sure that you're leveraging this cloud environment to the best of your ability. I'll go in and show us some of these analytics inside of this view. This is going to be our cloud spend view where we're able to see the total spend in our cloud environments over the last 30 days, as well as monthly spend and forecasting for the different providers. ServiceNow is able to utilize Cloud Insights for the main three cloud providers, such as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And it's going to break down your spend exactly where it's going and living inside of your cloud environment. So things such as storage, database, and compute, this is all going to be normalized under one heading. So you don't have to go in and add up every instance and every database living inside of your environment. It'll normalize it and present it to you in this fashion out of the box. Now there is a forecasting piece to all of this. So based on the way that your cloud environment is performing and currently being spent, this is where we're going to be able to see where the current month is and forecasting to the next month based on usage and predictive intelligence. Now, there are other pieces to this Cloud Insights solution, such as being able to report out different unassigned resources inside of your cloud environment. Now, this would come through with a discovery tool to make sure that we're grabbing this data and reporting it out, but this is where we can say, hey, these things are still pending assignment. Do we need to go ahead and make sure that someone is assigned to them? Or can we go ahead and spin down this particular configuration item based on the way that it's being used? And there's other key pieces of information here at the top that I won't drill into too, too much, but just wanted to call out this view and that we can actually see that there are different better together stories inside of the software asset management with things such as change management inside of this particular environment where we can see the particular change request associated to this particular cloud item.
I want to thank you for watching today's video on the software asset management solution. If you'd like more information around our ITAM solution, I encourage you to go ahead and scan this QR code. It'll take you directly to our product page, or you can go ahead and contact your account executive and ask for more information. Again, thank you for your time, and I hope today's video was helpful.